so for those of you who are new to this program, this or this uh, format, this is a webinar format. It's a little bit different than a Zoom meeting that you might be used to. We can't actually see you or hear you. So during this talk, if you have any questions, you're gonna submit those via the Q&A box on your Zoom menu. I'll be monitoring those. Um, we have today a special presentation. This is part two of our container gardens classes. If you missed part one, don't worry, we have a recording. Um, but today we have both Peg and Andy with us and they're gonna be discussing uh, containers and some other more practical elements of the container gardens and how to keep them healthy and that kind of thing. So this is definitely a great class. We get a ton of questions on these topics. So this is uh, this is a good good day, <laughs> good day to be joining us. Um, if you have any issues during the call, please feel free to let me know. You can use the chat box and uh, and let me know about that. Um, and if you have to leave during the call for any reason, we are recording today's class, as I said. So a uh, quick. Quick intro here. I know pretty much everybody probably knows Peg. Uh, Peg's been with us for many years and has been teaching classes for us. She's done our Gardening Advisor television program, um, and she works primarily in our annuals department at our Fair Oaks store. Andy also works in our Fair Oaks store, and <laughs> Andy, you're going to have to tell me a little bit updated about what you're what you're doing these days. I know you're working with containers and soils and amendments and all that stuff, but sure, sure, well, quick. Yes. <laughs> So, so I, I get to wear uh, several hats, which is great. Um, you know, first off, the pottery, water fountain statues um, is, is what I'm, of course, directly involved in. I also get to oversee our loading dock, which gets me very involved in all of our potting medias, mulches, stone products, um, gardening amendments. So, so really a lot of store product, gardening product, and things that are going to really apply great to, to this presentation. Great, awesome. De covering, I think, the foundations of what makes containers so excellent, the soils and things. So, all right, Peg and Andy, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you all. Thank you so much to both of you for being here today. Thanks, thank Sally. Thank you, and thank you all for tuning in. And I'd, I'd like to add something to, to this thing with Andy. Uh, Andy has been with us now, eight, is it eight years? Yeah. Eight yeah. years, yes. And Andy, of course, is a young man. But I, I really loved something that he shared with me the other day when we were talking about all of these things. He said, yes, I am young to the horticulture industry, but I am learning every day. And I was so pleased to hear that and for encouraging him to come on to the show and to share the knowledge that he has as he accumulates knowledge every day. Because as most of you know who watched the TV show or watched our, come to our seminars, I'm always promoting the young to encourage them to join in this nature world, planting, in appreciating the diversity and the need for that diversity. And so I really loved what he had to say. And those of you who have been watching know that I have included little great granddaughter Clara and sometimes little Lydia, because it is so important for us to teach and to share what we have learned, particularly with the young. So thank you, Andy. Thank you so much for wanting to come on and share. Now we're going to share some plant ideas with you. We're going to share placement of these containers. We're going to talk about the different types of containers, but we also have to think we're going into another no, another new season, another season, fall and eventually into winter. That's right. And you have some thoughts on the container. Yeah. For yeah. Winter, uh, that needs to be winter. Uh, That's right. Let's start with, uh, let's, let's kick it off with our, with our aqua pot. Yes, let's do that. All right, everybody. And I think we might have shown this in the past. So it's always nice to get a refresher or if anybody new hasn't seen this. Um, and I'll do my best to kind of give you a better view. So 
as you may notice, um, this container has, has an insert, um, has some plastic components inside of it. They are removable, but they hold a purpose. I'm actually gonna take it apart for just a moment. Okay, can I hand that to you? So this container has does not have traditional drainage. It is meant to hold water. The, hence the name aquapot. So the idea is that we can actually put our insert into this container. We can put what we call our, our water tube. This is what water will pour down into this reservoir. We can pop this up like normally. The, it's gonna be a little difficult maybe on the camera to see, but this insert right here has, has slits or cuts in it, which will then allow the water to wick into the soil like a, like a candle, and it will keep the um, soil moist. In the uh, hot season, having a container that helps you with your watering can just be really, really important. I know um, we all like to go out of town for a weekend, a week, take a vacation, and we don't want to come back to our plants looking really sad and wilted and, and wish that we would have told the neighbor to water for us. This is our friendly neighbor right here that will help us water in the hot season. A really great product. With that being said, since it does hold water, we do need to be aware of appropriate winterization. As we get cold weather, we don't want that water freezing, expanding, and causing damage to this beautiful container. So the aquapot, uh, works best in our area for annual plantings, plant flowers, any, it could be a, any sort of annual arrangement. And then as we approach a cold season, we'd actually want to um, winterize it by taking that plant material out, emptying all the water out. And we, with this container, if, if you did not want to move it inside, you could leave it upside down so water doesn't collect into it. Or if you have the capacity to get it into a garage or a shed, an area that's not going to take water, that's going to be the safest spot for it to keep it going year to year. All right. This is not the pot for winter containers. <laughs> yeah, please don't keep this outside in the winter. It's beautiful, but um, it would break. Yeah, yeah, we would have a, we'd have some breakage. I'm going to move it back. Please. Yes. And actually, if possible, we, we're, we've got a little bit of a learning curve here, so bear with us. Can you bring up the first slide? <laughs> let's, let's see how we do. Okay. okay, there we are. Now, this one I have taken in my own garden, which is, as most of you know, a lot of the pictures come from my garden because I've been at this for a while. I had planted this up several years ago. It's It's been maybe eight at least years. And this is an interesting container, which I will also want Andy to tell you about. But this is a large container. And it has a pier as a dwarf, Pyrrhus japonica. And it's undercut story with hasta and hukura coral bells and some ground covers flowing out of it. And of course, there's a sweet little fairy garden staged inside of the layer. And this has been a very satisfactory uh, area for me to enjoy displaying these containers. Um, let's go to the next picture while we add it so that I can tell them a little bit more about this area. And then I would like to tell you about for you to, to tell them about that crescent pot, the composite pots and how we use those. This actually is on the side of my driveway, which is permeable, okay? It, it is a gravel driveway. And there is a ground cover coming out from that of Rubus, R-U-B-U-S, Rubus. And it's actually at the top of a five foot retaining wall. So there's a drop here into my front garden. And so I have used this to display a lot of hydrotufa containers, which we will talk to you about also. But there are also composite containers, plastic containers, and that beautiful big crescent container here also. So I wanted you to see presentation. 
where do you locate these containers? And this is where I chose to locate some of the containers that have quite a diversity of plants in them. And if we can come back to our sunny, and you can show them that crescent pot, because we need to know a little bit about these different pots and, and how we use them. Absolutely. So the, the, the crescent, uh, which is, is the, the brand of this um, plastic container, a composite plastic. Now this is um, commercial grade plastic. So it has just wonderful durability. Um, they come in different styles from contemporary to traditional stylings, different colors. You can get bright spring colors. You can get uh, more of a typical terracotta orange finish that looks kind of, that's mimicking the, the clay terracotta. This is, you can kind of see a little bit of that on your screen. Um, uh, the, just a wide variety. Um, the other the other great thing about Crescent other than the durability is some of them have um, like a dual wall. For example, this has a, a hollowed space inside. That that air cavity, um, and, and we'll touch on, on more winterization later, but that's another great thing to help yes. get plants through both hot temperatures and cold temperatures yes. is, is air insulation. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later with but some other But it's good to let them know that this is one big plus. They are not, they're not inexpensive, okay? But as I said to you, I've used that great big one for over eight years and it's wonderful. Now, I don't know, you have a good bit in stock right now here. I can only speak to this location sure. right now. But you do have the ability within certain circumstances to order things in, right? Absolutely. I mean, there has um, to be enough to get that order in. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely, Peggy. So we can we can order these. We can, um, you know, we'll bring in seasonal groups as well. Right. So... Uh, that we can kind of highlight each season of the year and have a really nice showing of these lightweight containers. And that's the other big plus is they're lightweight. Of course, as you plant them, they are going to take on weight with plant media and, and, and material. But otherwise, when they're empty, man, they're easy to move around and, and put where you want them. Um, right. It's a great container. Okay. Now, one thing is, uh, there is excellent drainage in here. And I do and recommend a piece of the landscape fabric over this before you put the soil, topsoil in, top potting soil. Let's put potting soil in it. <laughs> okay, right. now the potting soil that I used in that big container was Fox Farm. I think it's, I, I saved some of the, um, the bags, but it should be in that, there we are. It's on the bottom, but I should have put it on the top because this is absolutely a favorite of mine. And of course, if you come to pick up this bag of potting soil, it will have potting mix in it. We have <laughs> emptied it, so it's a little easier and cleaner for us. Uh, Fox Farm Ocean Forest. Um, this is an ocean-based potting mix, so you're going to see things like kelp meal in here. Um, Many ocean basings, crab meal, shrimp meal, and then just everything that a plant would want to just really succeed in a container. Fox Farm puts out just a wonderful uh, mix of products and ocean forest being one of them. What a, what a wonderful potty mix. This is absolutely one of my favorites because it has all that organic material to get those things started, but it lasts over a long period of time Absolutely. also. Now I use in addition to that, uh, Spoma's uh, wonderful organic plant home. I, let's see if I can do this without upsetting something. I will, this has a lot of natural ingredients in it. And then I also add, according to the size of the container, some of this. And that's really all you need to get through the winter, particularly coming on, because you don't want to fertilize too heavily anyway. Okay, that, that's fantastic. Now, if we can bring along the next picture, I just want to show you some of the plants that can be used in any of these containers. And again, presentation. Okay, thank you, Andy. You're very welcome. This is another, this is a variegated Pieris japonica, and it is staged actually 
in the edge of the driveway also, but there is a huge Japanese cascading Japanese maple behind it. So it really showcases that well. The maple is is a dark, um, what, what would we go crimson? Is crimson, it enough, I guess. Yeah. You know? yeah, agreed. And it really shows off that variegation. But as I'm showing you some of these plants that really do well through the winter, through the seasons, um, this is one of them that has done quite well. And they can be used in any of these containers that Andy is telling you about. And let's go to the next one. Um, another absolute favorite plant. And they come in different sizes. So you can start small and you can go much bigger than that, depending upon the size of your container. This is a dwarf pine. And I love this. It actually has stayed in this container for quite some time because when you grow the evergreens in containers, it's certainly, I don't call it a bonsai, but it's similar and they can, they are somewhat restricted in their growth. And one can even uh, put in a, a larger growing shrub and with some trimming, keep it in the container for a long time, you know. And this has, growing at the bottom of it, uh, a base of ajuga. It's a bronze ajuga. It's beautiful. And I, I asked Andy, do we have any little rabbits outside? <laughs> because he helps order those also. And uh, he said, yes, we do have some of those, you know, because I do like to accent. Let's show the next one too while we're at it, huh? Okay, this one has some other plant material in it. That is a Hanoki cypress. Beautiful texture, beautiful color, beautiful. Yes. And they come in green and they come in, in the gold. Gold, color. yeah. Yeah, and different sizes. There's the, the dwarf forms that we have and, and those that grow larger. But again, um, one can prune, but not at this time of the year. You'll want to wait until March or early April to do that. But this is also in that container. There's mosses. Uh, there's there's uh, sedum. And in the background, in the ground, is a wonderful grass called Hakanakloa. And I love that one. Okay, you want to just let's keep going through some of these and then we're going to let you talk about more about these products. Okay. okay. Uh, Japanese maple. I'm, I'm very fond of Japanese maple and have quite a few of them. This one is in our gardens out here. Mm, yeah. And I love those. They're, they're display gardens where we showcase some of these plants. And that particular one is a dwarf form of the Japanese maple. And I hope that you can see uh, the base of that, the structure of it, you certainly will see it well in the wintertime because it loses its leaves and it's still very attractive. But that plant has been in several years. Yeah, yeah, we've and had it for a while. It's I beautiful. I think that's it. also in a, a hypertufa container. If I Some of them are hy correctly. big hypertufa and some of them are actually in wood. Mm. Now realizing that uh, over a period of time, one's going to have to replace that wood. It will <laughs> have to get replaced eventually, but a beautiful yes, container right. until that point in time. And the next one is another younger uh, one that is in a wood container, okay? Hey, Peg, we're getting some questions. If you're putting a dwarf Japanese maple or some of these evergreens in pots, what size pot would you use for that? Well, we are actually looking at containers that are fairly decent size. However, I do, I do start them young and I have a lot of little seedlings sometimes that I put in, in containers, even though they will eventually be really big. They stay small for a long, long time, but I would not try to grow one in less than a 14 or 16 inch pot, okay? Regular pot. Okay. I, it needs some soil, but amazingly, they're very winter hardy, and we'll, we'll talk more about that winter hardiness as we go along. Uh, let's show them the next one that's actually uh, that same older uh, Japanese maple. 
And there's quite a few things located around it. Uh, I wanted to show you this because it, it can show you the forms and the color of some of these wonderful plants. And these are all dwarf types, but the dwarf types come in larger sizes too. And there's ground covers among this with the ajuga. Now this is a pretty large container because it's a display garden, but you can, you can have that Japanese maple with under plantings and, and doing groupings because I have groupings in that driveway area. I don't have a big container like this. That's our display garden thing. And then we'll show uh, the next one, which is a, a dwarf uh, pine. And that too is in the hypertufa. Now, before we leave the hypertufa and leave that on while you cross over me, can you reach this? I can. <laughs> and, and talk to them about the, this, that I brought this from my home. And uh, yes, this is a hypertufa container and it, it has been around for quite a while. And I wanted to show you what happens with the hypertufa. And we're not telling you how to make that today because that's another program all to itself. Let's see if I can, yeah. and I may spin this a couple times yeah, so everybody can see how on. beautiful this is and the, and the form that's there, yeah. so. If we could zoom in, you could see the mosses that are growing on here and the patina that has come into that. That's what happens with this hypertufa, okay? Amazing. Really, and, and uh, there's a little different mix in this. Rather than the straight potting soil, I used uh, probably 75% of the Fox Farm. And then the next 25% is a division of the uh, coarse sand. And actually, I think I brought a lot no idea. Excuse my back for a second because we've got a lot here to talk about. Coarse sand, which I have in here. 25% mix of sand into that good potting soil. And then I also brought along, I like some sharp drainage and I use the Seminole chips. So I love to use the scoops. Probably in that container, there's about four or five scoops of the potting soil, a couple of scoops of the sand, and a couple of scoops of this wonderful textured, because that helps the water to move through. And then you can put some on the top too. I didn't put any on the top of this because I want these to easily root into that area, okay? But that's a different mix and it's peculiar to this type of thing that you want to drain very quickly and very easily. But do, now let's go a little bit more into the winterizing as far as uh, sitting on the ground versus in a condo and where people um, have air moving around these on decks and that sort of thing. So if you'll take it and show them uh, what we've used in your pot feet. Did you bring your pot feet up? I here? did. Okay. Um, So a couple things, and I'm going to just lift this just for a for a moment, just so everybody can get a little clearer picture. That this hypertufa is sitting on an elevated um, stand, if you will. Okay. So other than visually, in case you want to raise something up so that it is more aesthetically pleasing on your property, maybe it's too hidden if it's low. Uh, of course, you can use some sort of riser or pedestal, but it also serves a, a, a great purpose in terms of um, keeping containers out of shallow puddles of water, which goes back into linearization. We really want to make sure that not just our plant material, but the beautiful containers that we're putting our plant material in is, is, is taken care of and is not going to incur damage from, from harsh winters. Um, so we'll see if you can see. I brought in a couple examples of what we would call risers or pot feet. This is, a, I understand it is a cat, but it has a ledge on it. So it's a decorative pot feet. Um, I just thought it was really fun. So I brought this one up. 
but they come in many different shapes and forms and they're they're uh they can be both beautiful but also very utilitarian because they serve a really good purpose this is a ceramic pot feet you can see it's got clay with the white glaze on it they come in different colors so that you can match your pot feet to the color of your containers whites blues reds blacks greens um just a really, really wonderful way to keep that container elevated so it's not sitting in that shallow puddle of water in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great way to just protect your pottery to have a, a longer lifespan. And if it's sitting on a, a, a deck or a patio, it's easy to, to clean beneath it too, you know? That's right. Yeah, it just yeah. makes it easier to maintain, keep clean, just all really good pauses with pot feet i'm always recommending these for any outdoor container regardless of what the material is made out of we have concrete containers we have concrete pot feet terracotta containers terracotta pot feet right. ceramic so on and so forth right and and i love that idea because you don't ever want to leave any container sitting on the soil in That's the right. winter time because That's it right. wicks that moisture you have another one that is one of my favorites over here because people are always concerned. Uh, yeah, we need Let's to move, move that this back. back. Okay. <laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful container, Peggy. I'd take it home with me, but I know it's yours. <laughs> well, I really, I love the patina that it acquires over time. And uh, yeah, it, and by the way, I, I think I can lift this up maybe. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a tendency to tuck fun little things in. And in the greenhouse, I saw this little acorn house. That is that's adorable. Into it. Hey, we're getting a lot of questions in. So I just want to tell everybody, and you can add something if you want to, but they're asking the, about the hyper tufa. What is it? Called? They're just asking about the name of it, that the pot that you were just showing. Yeah. Uh, so that's called a hyper tufa. I just typed it out. I'll send it in the chat, everybody. And we, does Leo make those? Leo absolutely does. And yep. we, I won't get into the how to because that would be two programs in yep. reality, but he is a master at it. We started this a number of years ago and we have a wonderful selection of them out there right now. And they have great longevity. I, I've not had one break. Uh, over 20 years, I guess I'm getting some crumbling now at the top of a four by four that we made years ago in my garden. And so that, that pot doesn't owe me a thing at this point in the game. <laughs> and I think that the big shrub that's in it has probably grown through the bottom into the ground anyway. So it's okay, you know. So there's great longevity. Yes, we have those hypertufa. And if you come in, this is primarily at the Ferox location because Leo is a master at it, you know, and we can certainly answer any questions. And we also have a handout um, that we have handouts downstairs that tells you about it. And you can actually go online and there's a lot of different ways of going about it and different shapes and sizes. I mean, we've even made, with Leo's assistance, <laughs> some round spheres. Some ornamental spheres. And they're wonderful. I think yeah. I've seen a container, I think he made one this, this season that was, I mean, yes. a, a large container, so small, large for any application. Right. Just another way to make a, a look with with uh, beautiful textures. Uh, Peggy's one, you know, has this, uh, as you probably had seen that just amazing moss growing on it, which is, I, I think, awesome. I, I love it. I love it too. Now, we also have uh, an awful lot of questions about moving these pots around because I'm always advocating outside, the larger you can have, the better, okay? Uh, depending on what you're going for. Groupings of pots, uh, 14 inch up, generally speaking, because in the heat of summer, we had 90 degree days for a row. That's too year. darn hot. You have to water every day, even the 14 inch, but I have some bigger. But what you have in front of you there is one of my favorite things for decks and patios and uh, balconies that, yeah got wheels 
a really wonderful, durable, great way to get some mobility out of your container without hurting yourself. Um, this, th this specific support on wheels is rated for 500 pounds. So that's a really nice size container with media in it, with some plant material, um, and it will really hold up well. This specific model does have a wheel lock so that when you don't want it to move and roll, you, you hit your lock and, and then it's stationary. Otherwise, when it's time to, uh, whatever it may be, I need to water it, my hose isn't reaching, uh, or clean, a better clean the deck, <laughs> clean the deck. Uh, I, I find that I want this plant in this area rather than that area. Just okay. a great way to move it around so that you don't, um, you know, hurt hurt yourself or, or you know, just, just to make it easier. Really, yeah. really great products. Yeah, and we've got these in multiple different styles. Yeah. Um, uh, all have like a, a caster wheel system, if you will. Yeah, I think these are great. You just don't want to buy one. Some of them have saucers on them. You don't want that for the winter time because it'll hold water and anything that holds water will possibly break. And if you've got saucers now, when it's hot, sometimes a few things I put saucers under because I'm not concerned about the mosquitoes because it's going to use up that water when it's 90 degrees and no chance for mosquitoes in that. But you don't want them under pots in the wintertime. No saucers. They will hold water and they'll break concrete even. Okay. But um, we were talking also about the size. You said this will hold 500 pounds. And when you have a really big container, and we have some gorgeous big containers out there, and you add your soil, it can get close to that. Sure. Okay. So this is slightly mobile, but we have a lot of people who ask questions about lightening it with cans or whatever, you know. Yeah, we do. I don't always recommend that. Certainly you can but it isn't something that I recommend because it's amazing at the end of the season, if you took some of these things out of the containers, you'd be shocked how far down those roots go. Yeah, the roots and, and, and then we're speaking to drainage and right. um, just the, the natural flow of, of moisture through that container. Um, yeah, I think we've all probably, whether we've done it ourselves or, or heard from a, a friend or family where somebody may, use some um, bottles or something to try to mm -hmm. keep it light. Um, I think all with good intent, but sometimes you risk, um, you know, possibly the health of the, the plant in the pot mm -hmm. if, if, if we don't have appropriate drainage going on and things like that. And of course you can always have a dolly. I have dolly because I have far too many containers for sure, okay. And I just, if we can go again back to the pictures, for yeah, a minute, absolutely. Okay. I've got a couple of other things to share here. Uh, we spoke uh, earlier of the dwarf pines, and there's different varieties of things out there. And and look, uh, go back to the other one if you can. Uh -oh. There we go. That's all right. Go back if you can. And right. then if you can't, we'll stop right there. It's Let's very see. interesting. I'm trying to find my arrow. It's hard to see here. Yes, it is. And no. Hey, there we go. There you go. Good. It. All right. This this is new to us. This this part of this. <laughs> okay. Look look at the trunk of that. Isn't that interesting? That's amazing. Now this is an evergreen, and it's it is a type of pine. Is that a mugo pine? You Do know, I don't think it's a mugo. But honestly, I didn't. I don't know. Remember exactly which variety it is, but it is in our display garden out there. And if you're interested. We can certainly find out, okay. But it's absolutely beautiful. It's been in that container. Again, that's a big hyper container there. And if you uh, aspired to that, you'd want to make it in place because it would be hard to move around. And if you click to the next picture, let's talk a, this, about, a little bit about terracotta. And, mm. and we, we've got a little terracotta pot, which is an absolute favorite of mine. To me, Terracotta is like a good black dress. You dress it up, you dress it down, it can go all around. <laughs> Everybody should have one. Everybody should. 
<laughs> and there is, uh, again, it doesn't have to be a dwarf um, evergreen. There is a juniper, upright juniper in the back that is in a container, but I do use a lot of terracotta and I will get some breakage now and then, but it's not very often. And this uh, lantana is growing in a terracotta pot. And just for your own interest, this is a group of pots that I have above that brick wall in, in another section off the driveway that I can view from my front porch and enjoy the hummingbirds and they love, it's planted specifically for them, but the butterflies are, are very much there also. But I also have extra terracotta ones that I now have planted the pansies, the violas, and some of the kale in to be growing on and get established. And when frost finally takes this out, which could be a while, I will exchange it. I will take that and put that little pot to rest and bring out the one that has the pansies in. So that's how I get around having to take the beautiful plants out. I have extra pots, but terracotta. Let's yeah, see if I can it, right? get us full screen again. There we, go. There we go. Terracotta. Um, whether you, you may know or not know, is a, it's been a staple in the gardening industry since the, the beginning, beginning of time. time. <laughs> um, so it's a, it's a clay material. Uh, generally, when we say terracotta, we, we are referring to the clay that is, is this kind of orangish red color, natural clay color. Um, great for many reasons. Um, not only is it just a classic look, um, they, they, they make these styles also in, in contemporary and traditional looks. Um, you can get really creative with these as well. I've had a, a great customer that hand paints her terracotta. It's a wonderful surface to paint on. Now, on the flip side of that for plants, it's a, it's a porous clay. So when you talk about water retention and how things move through um, different materials, Terracotta can absorb a little bit of moisture and retain that moisture, which can be really nice during um, warmer temperatures. Right. It's great. It breathes well. That's yes. it. And it comes in all sizes. Yes. We brought up some smaller pots because they're easier for us to handle. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of stuff collected That's right. here. Okay. While we're talking about pots, I, I brought up for you this because I have a lot of ceramic pots too at my house. And um, yeah, this is neat. And I know you ordered a lot of ceramics. Lots of ceramics. I mean, um, well, when I first started with the garden center and, and my plant knowledge was, was very limited, um, I still understood the fact that you could make something beautiful without even a plant in there. Ceramics mm -hmm. just have wonderful, bright colors, um, rich colors, textures. Um, ceramics are great. They're just an amazing way to, to, to put an addition on the, on the residence, the patio, the balcony, on top Absolutely. of the retaining wall, where, wherever you may go either side of the doorway. So we have a really nice large selection across our three stores with really amazing ceramics. Um, and I'd like to say we've got a pretty good selection of all the all the containers that we're speaking to. Um, the only one I'd say is the Hypertufa is maybe a little bit uh, more, not exclusive to us, but you'll see more Hypertufa out here is, is yeah. Leo who works with us is, is making these by right. hand wonderful products. Absolutely. And I love these and, and really use them because they combine so well with, for instance, the clay. And I, I really have just one pot anywhere. <laughs> it's usually a grouping of That's containers. Right. And, and it's wonderful to use this. And I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever lost one of these to the to the winter yeah and i'd like to add on that i mean our, our so we've got we've got ceramics that we that we um 
retail outside that are generally rated for outdoors this is a thicker clay that's been glazed and then fired to give this beautiful look um all of these ceramic containers are are frost resistant that we're retailing outside for outdoor use we've got a really good selection of what i would call indoor ceramic containers as well but those are more suited for indoors so they're going to be a little bit thinner um so less apt to hold up in the cold of winter but that's why we would be using them indoors so something for everybody whether you're you're renting a condo and don't have a big outdoor space we've got a great selection of indoor ceramic pots and both outdoor more resilient frost resistant thicker clay pots that are going to hold up uh, really well in the winter and if you come in and you speak to me i'm going to say you're going to pick up some pot feet too like i mentioned <laughs> earlier to elevate them and really give you a longer lifespan on these products absolutely so i love 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 the ceramics i really do mm -hmm. and and i think you do a great job with the ordering process there okay let's let's bring up the next one and talk about uh japanese maple oh as i said i'm really really fond of um this japanese maple this one uh started out as a very young it's a cascading maple my large maples the tall ones will reseed although they may not come totally true to the parent plant but i i've only had this cascading one seed uh, minimally i mean only a few over the years but this started in a terracotta container i think about four years ago something got dropped on it and then the tree was already pretty good size it was sitting on a tree stump and so i was able to acquire this really big uh, terracotta container and it also is sitting on uh, a tree stump which i unfortunately lost many years ago and uh i wanted to show you what it looks like right now because uh, i can't really remember exactly how old this is uh it's been in this container it has only been moved into this larger container for as i said at least four years at which time i reprinted somewhat treated it a bit like you would a bonsai and repruned and put some fresh soil in it and other than that I just am sure that I keep it watered in the summertime. I don't worry about in the wintertime. Usually I have plenty of rain and I never, besides I turn the faucets off and I don't, I don't water it in, okay? Unless we had some weird, really dry period of time, I might do differently, okay? But it is in a grouping, as I said, I never plant just one container. And so it is in a grouping. And if we bring up the next picture, I just want to, prove a point here for a second you can see um the golden grass that's there that is hakanakloa it will turn brown in the winter time but i do not cut it back because it is it it's part of the winter scene and i love it but big mistake the biggest one that you see is planted in the container that that comes up rounded at the top and i will probably never be able to get that out. you want me to try to <laughs> represent that with this right you now can, if you a little bit, see if this can uh i can show you so what peggy's talking about if she had a that grass planted in a container that as opposed to open <laughs> tapering to an open uh to a larger opening she put it in a container that tapers this way, which was fine for the first little bit of time until she realized she needed to pull it out of the container. And then it was like no. stuck in the container a little bit. That doesn't mean you can't use a container that tapers in. You just have to be aware that if it if if it fills out, the roots get established really nice and it's in there for an extended period of time, could be uh difficult to get it out of there. So that's more of a a future looking into the future of what you may need to do with that container as time progresses and, well be careful what you put into it don't put an ornamental grass in it that's right they tend to uh grow 
you, pretty rapidly you're, and really established strong. I have a heavy duty um, kitchen knife. I mean, really heavy duty that I reserve for this purpose. It's fairly easy to, if you've got a geranium growing in it or begonia or something like that, it's fairly easy to cut down and take sections out and it's fine, but you don't cut through the roots of an ornamental grass. Good, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Just does not happen. But let's let's bring up this, this well, it's not the last slide, but it's next to that. Okay. And and really talk a little more seriously about winterizing. I'll um, run the next one. No, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's e okay. You can see this a little bit easier. <laughs> this was taken a little earlier. Um, I think it's been two years since I took that picture, and actually, it's underplanted there with um, pansies and violas. Now, I do not want to disturb that root system putting in a large annual. So I put those in as six packs, little, little root systems at the edges of that pot so that I didn't disturb that root system. Now, over the top of a soil that's in there, I also put a layer of that Cimarron chips that I showed you earlier. Why did I do that? To keep the soil in, I don't know, I set it down here. Uh, I set it lower. I can reach it. We'll come back to it in a minute. Um, here's the reasoning behind that. Number one, it keeps the squirrel from digging in the pots. They love fresh soil. And they don't, this discourages that. But also, it helps with the watering. And uh, it keeps the soil from washing out. So it really works, you know, but winterizing that, and by the way, somebody's gonna ask, I know, what is that yellow plant there? Okay. It's a bleeding heart. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a golden bleeding heart, which is just a beautiful plant, you know? And uh, on, on the other side, there is a Carl Bells that's beautiful in the winter time. Now the bleeding heart disappears in the winter time, okay. But but here again, let's come back and talk about winterizing. Um, when we were discussing the winterizing thing um, the other day with Andy, you're you're on a balcony, and there are a lot of people with balconies that that have. Uh, plants growing on them even in the winter time. You know? So you were talking about some of the ways that you would suggest to people how they could winter these containers, um, which I thought was a good idea. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and I kind of have, you know, there's our, what I'll call our, our, our bubble wrap method, which we'll get into. And then, and then also kind of my 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 bagged mulches, which if works. You will. Yes. Should we start with this? All right. Okay. Well, let's pretend that this is that big container. And I teasingly said to him, "It's not really the roots of that Japanese maple that I'm concerned about, because that maple is hardy. Okay. You can see I have them growing in smaller containers. My concern is I don't want that terracotta pot to break. It's a beautiful container." <laughs> And I'm not sure if that one is available anymore. So you no, better hold on to that I, one. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, I'll have to find something else. But it's fairly easily to come by. Is And the insulating factor is very good. Um, I like to use this. Now, this is not going to be perfect, okay? But sod pins come in handy in so many ways. So many. And so I will actually go around the edge. I do not want to cover in here because the water needs to get to it. And I'll pin that right to the edge with this side pin all the way around and tuck it underneath. All right. After I've done that, I don't want to look at that all winter. So burlap, and we have lots of burlap here. Burlap. Okay, let's come back and cover that. Again, 
You can put that down with both side pins and it's attractive. You can even tie it firmly and make a little bow there if you want to. That's right. And that will actually help those a lot. Now you can you can do that individually if you're if you're elevated and you're in on a, a condo, um, you've got colder temperatures there around these spots. So your idea of banking, grouping them and banking them somewhat with even the bags, mm -hmm. you could still cover the bags with something that's attractive. So you don't have to look at the bags all the way. Absolutely. Still make it look pretty, I think. <laughs> Aesthetically pleasing. Huh? And, and, and what, what Peggy was mentioning on is just yet another method to, to winterize um, the the bubble wrap, which Peggy showed you is great. That's yet again, kind of when I was speaking about the, um, the plastic <laughs> containers with air insulation. That's exactly what this bubble wrap is doing. It's putting a layer of air and air is a, is a wonderful insulator um, when, it, when it comes to uh, keeping the longevity of these containers and plants. You can use a bag of mulch. Don't take the mulch out of the bag, simply hug the containers with the bags of mulch and uh, that will keep them warm and insulated in the winter. And then when spring comes around, you open that mulch and you dress your ornamental beds or wherever you need to, to put some new mulch. So it's yeah. not a it's not a loss of product or anything. It's a great way to just keep everything going throughout the seasonal change. Now I'm looking at this clock, Sally, and I'm realizing that we really talked a great deal, but we had a lot to cover. I will at the very end have one last photo to show you, but quickly, and we're not gonna have time for questions, unfortunately, okay? But quickly, we've got a couple more uh, potting soils. In mm. addition to our Maryfield blend, there are two others there that I really would love you to be able to speak to because they are very good potting soils. And yes, there is a difference between potting soil and planting mix. Andy and I, in a couple of weeks, will be doing another uh, program and we'll be talking about in-ground planting and planting mixes. But these are very good products too and organic also. So if you remember from at the start of the program, we showed you that ocean-based Fox Farm product called Ocean Forest Potty Mix. Fox Farm's forest-based uh, product uh, potty mix called Happy Frog. Happy Frog is yet just another uh, wonderful product from Fox Farms. We're talking about just a beautiful potting media that does a wonderful job of drying out thoroughly in between waterings um, and then has all of the um, what I call the good stuff in it to, to make the plant yeah. really happy whether it's earthworm castings natural yes. humus just everything that you want um, to keep your plants going in the right direction uh, the ocean forest and happy frog man am I really happy I, I do personally use both these products I, and I, yes. I think they are phenomenal mm -hmm. I really stand behind them they're great and who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like that, that package? Frog. I love it. I love it. And there's another one that is also excellent, and it is also organic. Okay. We uh, we talked also earlier about that plant tone by Espoma. So this is Espoma's potting mix. Uh, what Espoma has done with all of their products is that is organics. So when you um, want to use anything organic, if you think of Espoma, they're, they're going to have an organic option for you, whether that's a potting media or a fertilizer or food Absolutely. for your plants. This, yeah. this is excellent. And it contains the mycorrhiza, alfalfa meal, worm castings, uh, kelp meal, feather meal. All a lot that. of good stuff. But it's all slow release too, so it, it works over a period of time. Not everything needs that heavy duty. What, is there anything you'd like to wrap up with? Um, I think we went over our containers pretty well. Um, all sorts of different materials. I mean, I would like to say, you know, you brought up terracotta and I do feel like sometimes people can be hesitant as they think terracotta might be more fragile than others. 
Um, and, and I think there may be a little bit more fragility, if you will, but well, they hold up bit. really well. And I think just doing the appropriate things to what we call winterize, whether it's using the pot feed, uh, bubble wrapping or mulching mm -hmm. your containers in, both to protect the container um, and the plants, I mean, are just super important. And there's, you know, mm -hmm. Nothing like being able to enjoy these things year after year through the seasonal change, the beautiful colors and textures, as you saw in all the pictures, all great things. And how their fire is important. Our Mexican pottery, you have to bring in. You absolutely cannot leave it outside because it's not fired as well as the other pottery. The Italian pottery is fired really well. That's right. That we yeah, a little bit different process now they make it, and that yes. just makes it more or less conducive to uh, certain weather conditions right on the money. Anything else you'd like to do? I, I, I think I'm good. Um, okay. How about you, Peg? I think we're fine. You know, you can also remember to plant those pandies and violas. And if you decide to do, for instance, a boxwood, which I did bring up one, they winter in containers really well. And um, come in lots of different sizes. I have so I get pictures worth a thousand words, but I can't put too many pictures on here. Right? <laughs> I have a really large one in a couple of containers as an accent piece, and it's been there. They had actually been in, in those containers for five or six years, and just recently I pulled it out, root pruned somewhat, loosened it up a little bit, put some fresh soil, and pink back into the same container. So it'll go on forever in those containers, really, if you take care of it. So boxwood winters well. Um, I've learned the hard way that Japanese maple, which I love, and is often referred to as the poor man's boxwood, does not winter in containers well. It's, it's amazing how some plants will and some plants won't. Boxwood's a great one, you know. Um, I'd like to bring up one last picture. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> I said to you, I've, I've enjoyed working with Andy. I've had the opportunity to exchange thoughts and ideas because we learn from each other every day. Doesn't matter how old you are. Every day, I think I learned something new that day and, and rejoice in that. Now, this one is a young one. I am so amazed at what she picks up on. Now, she has gone to the garden and helped pick the rosemary, and she is measuring very carefully and helping to make focaccia bread. Mm. And they had, she's also previously helped make a squash soup to go with the focaccia bread. So this is Clara. She had to take a break from being in the garden to using the products from the garden. So um, I, I just want to say thank you, Andy, for sharing uh, with everyone and with me also. And thank you, Sally, for all your instructional things. Andy was going through a little bit more than you might realize. He, he was having to be our Kelly today. He had to- Danny and our Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> we got to run the computer. I hope we did all right for everybody today. And I just want to second what Peggy was saying. Just uh, what a wonderful way to connect with old and young and everybody in between. It's been just amazing working at the garden center, learning from everybody around me. Um, it's just an amazing way to uh, both look at work, life, and enjoy everything in front of you. Absolutely. We're very fortunate. Let's come back to us, honey, so we can say goodbye properly. Um, we're very fortunate in this industry because we're working at jobs that we enjoy, that we love, that That's we thrive on, but that we share. Yeah, yeah the beauty everybody. of the world and we get to work right in yeah, it. To, it's amazing. To share with one another because we're all so different and we have different focus and we learn from each other. And when we stop learning, 
That's it. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You all. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Peg. Thank you, Andy. We've got to have more uh, group group uh, class sessions. This is fun. Um, and I'm making butternut squash soup tonight. Now I'm really hungry and I'm looking forward to it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Peg, Andy, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Andy, look forward to having you back, Peg. Same for you. Um, join them for their planting, amending, and composting class in, I think, a couple of weeks. I need to double check the date, but uh, check online for any more upcoming classes. I believe our next one is on Tuesday on Japanese maples with our arborist, Michael Fay. Um, and we will be sending out an email tomorrow with your coupon, with the recording, and with a handout with some notes from the class. Um, so I'll be following up with you two to confirm those. So everybody, thank you so much. Please email me any questions you have and we will see you soon. Bye.